At 7.30 a.m. on November 9, 2025, a routine drone flight over Mount Etna's upper slopes revealed something volcanologists had dreaded for decades. A crack stretching over two kilometers was tearing open a zone once thought stable. Unlike any fissure ever recorded here, this colossal fault hints at forces accelerating beneath Sicily, threatening millions with the genuine possibility of catastrophic collapse and tsunami. What no one knows yet is just how quickly this crisis is unfolding, or what clues are hidden inside the fracture itself. At 7.30 that morning, a field team from Italy's National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology launched a drone along Mount Etna's upper southeastern slope. The air was still, the sky clear, and the routine flight was intended to check for minor changes in surface ash and gas vents. Less than five minutes into the scan, the drone's camera swept over a raw, jagged line running across the snow-dusted rock, a fracture so wide it cast a shadow even in the early light. The operator froze, then called out coordinates. Within seconds, a second drone was redirected to the same grid. What appeared on both feeds was unmistakable. A gaping crack stretching farther than their field of view could track, splitting the mountain's skin for over two kilometers at nearly 10,000 feet elevation. The field radio crackled as the team leader, boots crunching over loose pumice, relayed the discovery to headquarters in Catania. The message said, this is not a normal event. The fissure is massive, repeat, massive. Location is the critical southeast zone. The urgency in the voice was clear, even as the message was clipped and professional. Within minutes, the first ground team reached the nearest accessible point. They found the earth torn open, steam and sulfur venting in thick, acrid bursts. The crack was wider than any they had seen in years of fieldwork, several meters across in places with no visible bottom from the rim. Team members began snapping time-stamped photographs and logging GPS points, their gloves shaking as they measured the edges. One geologist, voice caught on a backup recorder, whispered, this shouldn't be happening here. The field log from 7.34 AM notes unprecedented surface rupture. No prior warning from last week's satellite pass. The initial survey, rushed but systematic, Confirmed the fissure cut through a sector scientists had watched for decades, but never expected to fail so suddenly. As the news reached the INGV control room, the atmosphere shifted from routine monitoring to crisis mode. Phones lit up. Emergency protocols were activated. The team's live images, beamed to volcanologists and civil protection officials, showed the crack's geometry slicing across old lava flows and recent ash fields. Every new angle revealed more, the fracture's mouth yawning wider, the ground on either side offset by visible centimeters. The first measurement, still rough, suggested a structural break that dwarfed any previous fissure on Etna's upper slopes. By 8 a.m., access above 8,000 feet was closed. All field teams were ordered to remain below the fracture line unless equipped for hazardous gas exposure. The sense of urgency deepened as the scale of the event became clear. Not just another surface scar, but a sign that something fundamental had changed inside the mountain. The clock had started, and the world's attention was now fixed on a single impossible and dangerous crack tearing open one of Europe's most dangerous volcanoes. The crack that split open Mount Etna's upper southeastern slope stands apart from anything recorded in the mountain's modern history. It is unprecedented in scale. Field teams traced its path for more than two kilometers, a distance that dwarfs the typical surface ruptures seen after eruptions or seismic events. In some places, the fracture yawns several meters across, wide enough that a person could vanish from sight if they lost their footing at the rim. No one on the ground could see the bottom, even peering down with high-powered flashlights and camera zooms. The edges are raw, jagged, and freshly torn, with sulfurous steam venting from deep within, evidence of a rupture that cuts far below the weathered crust. Standard fissures on Etna rarely reach such dimensions, 
In past decades, even the most dramatic surface cracks, like those that opened during the 2002 eruption, measured at most a meter or two wide, often closing up or filling with debris within days. This new fracture is different in every respect. It slices through a zone volcanologists have called the mountain's weak seam, a sector flagged for years in hazard maps and scientific briefings. Experts from the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology have repeatedly warned that this part of the volcano sits atop fractured, unstable ground with a long record of slow, creeping movement. Yet until now, that movement was measured in millimeters per year, not in a sudden, gaping wound that appeared almost overnight. Measurements began as soon as the first ground team arrived. GPS units logged the endpoints, while drones carried out overlapping flights to build a digital model of the fracture's geometry. Early data confirmed the crack's length and placement. It runs nearly parallel to the main axis of the southeast flank, precisely where decades of satellite monitoring have shown the highest rates of ground deformation. The widest points, several meters across, were flagged for urgent follow-up, as these may represent the first signs of a much larger structural failure. Scientists noted that the depth, though not yet fully mapped, is described as unprecedented by every team on site. The location of the fissure only adds to the alarm. This is not a random surface break, but a rupture cutting through the very sector most vulnerable to gravitational sliding, a zone where the mountain's bulk is already pressing against the limits of its own stability. The images and measurements now pouring into the INGV control room are not just documenting a dramatic surface change, they are capturing the first hard evidence that the mountain's most dangerous flank may be shifting in ways that defy previous models. Each new data point, each drone pass, and each field measurement is being cross-checked against years of historical records, but nothing matches the scale or placement of this event. What was once a theoretical risk has become a concrete, measurable problem, one that scientists must now interpret in real time as the mountain continues to move beneath their feet. Decades of careful measurement have shown that Mount Etna's southeastern flank is never truly still. Permanent GPS stations installed by the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology track this vast slope as it inches toward the Ionian Sea. Under normal conditions, the movement is slow, just a few millimeters each year, often too subtle for even local residents to notice. Satellite radar known as INSAR confirms the same trend. The ground creeps eastward, a silent migration measured in fractions of an inch. Scientists have long described this as a classic case of gravitational instability. The mountain's southeastern side built on fractured sediment and ancient fault lines, is essentially detaching from the main cone. In 2018, an international study drew a clear conclusion. The entire sector is in progressive motion, its pace steady but relentless, and its future uncertain. Routine monitoring creates a detailed time lapse of the mountain's restless skin. Each GPS station logs its position every few seconds, while satellite passes stitch together a moving map of subtle bulges and dips. Over the years, the data reveal a living volcano, its shape constantly changing. Small earthquakes and minor eruptions might speed up the slide for a day or two, but the long-term trend remains, a slow, persistent drift toward the sea. The southeast flank, in particular, has been a focus of concern, flagged in hazard maps, as the most likely site for a major structural failure. INGV's archives are filled with time series plots, lines creeping upward, showing cumulative displacement year after year. These lines, once steady and predictable, recently took a sharp and unexpected turn. In the 48 hours before the giant crack appeared, the mountain's movement accelerated at a rate never before recorded. Ground stations detected several centimeters of slip, an entire year's worth of motion compressed into two days. The shift was not uniform. Some sensors positioned above the future fracture 
registered abrupt jumps in position, while others nearby showed only minor displacement. Satellite radar images from consecutive passes captured the ground, stretching and tearing along a two-kilometer segment, precisely where the new fissure would soon open. Seismic logs from the INGV network recorded a cluster of deep earthquakes in the same period, their timing closely matching the spike in ground deformation. To volcanologists, these numbers are not just statistics. They are a warning written in the language of the mountain itself. The southeast flank's long, slow slide has always been a concern, but this sudden acceleration is different. It is not speculation or theory. It is measured, recorded, and confirmed by independent systems. The data leave little room for doubt. What was once a creeping hazard has become an urgent reality with the mountain's most unstable sector now moving in ways that defy previous experience. For the scientists at INGV, the question is no longer whether the flank is slipping, but how much further and how much faster it might go. Deep beneath Mount Etna's upper slopes, two powerful forces have converged to threaten the mountain's very foundation. The first is magma pressure, an invisible hand rising from the Earth's mantle intruding into cracks and chambers inside the volcano. As molten rock seeks a path upward, it pushes against the overlying layers, prying open faults and seams that have held for centuries. Each pulse of magma adds stress, wedging apart the fractured crust and forcing the mountain to expand from within. But pressure from below is only half the story. The southeastern flank of Etna, where the new crack has appeared, sits atop a slope that has been slowly succumbing to gravity for generations. The sheer mass of the volcano's side, built up by thousands of years of eruptions, is perched on a layer of soft sediment and broken bedrock. This foundation is far less stable than the solid rock found beneath most of the world's great volcanoes. Instead, Etna's southeastern sector rests on a patchwork of ancient marine sediments and shattered volcanic debris a base that acts more like a sliding hillside than a solid pedestal. Gravity is relentless. Over decades, the entire flank has inched toward the sea, its movement tracked by satellites and ground sensors. Normally, this slide is slow and steady, measured in millimeters per year. But when the internal pressure from rising magma increases, it acts like water behind a dam, straining against a wall that is already beginning to give way. The result? is a dangerous synergy. Magma pushes outward and upward, while gravity pulls the unstable slope downward and seaward. The forces do not simply add, they multiply, each making the other more effective at breaking the mountain apart. To understand the risk, volcanologists often use the analogy of a dam with two problems at once. Imagine water rising higher and higher behind a dam whose foundation is eroding from below. The wall might hold against either threat alone, but together, they set the stage for disaster. On Etna, the magma acts as the rising water, while the weak, sliding base is the crumbling foundation. The giant crack that opened at 10,000 feet is the first visible warning that both forces are reaching their limits. Geological surveys confirm that Etna's southeastern slope is riddled with old faults and weak seams. These zones are especially vulnerable to sudden shifts when internal pressure and gravitational pull combine. Recent data shows that the crack slices through precisely the area where these weaknesses are most pronounced, an area mapped for years as the most likely site of catastrophic failure. The mountain structure is now under extraordinary stress. With magma continuing to rise and the slope's foundation steadily giving way, the odds of a large-scale collapse increase dramatically. Scientists are not just watching for more surface cracks, they are modeling how these dual threats could trigger a chain reaction, breaking loose millions of tons of rock in a matter of seconds. As the dam analogy makes clear, when both the pressure inside and the weakness below reach a critical point, the system can fail suddenly and without further warning. That is the reality facing those who study 
and live beneath Mount Etna's restless southeast flank. When the southeastern flank of Mount Etna gives way, the consequences unfold instantly. Millions of tons of volcanic rock loosened by years of creeping movement and a sudden fracture, would thunder downhill in a single, unstoppable surge. The mass, equal to several skyscrapers stacked end to end, would crash into the Ionian Sea below with a force that dwarfs any landslide in living memory. The impact would displace a vast volume of water, launching a tsunami that races outward at highway speeds. Coastal towns would have only minutes, sometimes less before the first wave arrives. Scientists have mapped thick underwater debris fields stretching more than 15 kilometers offshore, silent proof that Etna has collapsed before. Sonar scans and sediment cores reveal ancient layers of shattered rock and marine sand, deposited by prehistoric landslides and the tsunamis they spawned. These buried scars confirm what models predict. The physical chain from slope failure to wave generation is not just possible, but has happened on this mountain in the distant past. The evidence lies both above ground and deep beneath the sea, a warning encoded in stone and sediment. In Catania, more than 312,000 people now live with the knowledge that their city sits in the path of a potential disaster. Civil protection officials have enforced a strict closure above 8,000 feet, turning away hikers, tour guides, and researchers who have worked these slopes for years. Signs on every mountain road warn of sudden danger. Police and park rangers patrol the access points, their radios alive with updates from the monitoring teams. For many, the reality of the crack is not a distant threat, but a daily disruption. In the fishing port of Asi Treza, boats remain tied to the dock even as the weather clears. A fisherman, voiced tight with worry, says, We keep our boats tied up. Nobody knows if the next tremor is the last before the wave. In Zafirana et Nea, a hotel owner watches as cancellations come in by the hour. Half say the government is overreacting. Half say it is not enough. She shrugs, frustration clear in her eyes. The tension between safety and daily life is everywhere. Emergency drills are repeated in schools, but social media is crowded with rumors and conflicting advice. Some local politicians urge calm, hoping to protect tourism and business, while scientists insist these closures are not a precaution, they are a necessity. The uncertainty is personal, immediate, and impossible to ignore. Scientists now rely on a network of sensors and cameras to track every subtle change along Etna's unstable southeast flank. The first warning sign is always the crack itself. Any sudden widening, new branches, or shifts in depth are logged in real time. Seismographs pick up even faint tremors, alerting researchers to hidden movement beneath the surface. Gas monitors track sulfur dioxide and other emissions which can spike as magma rises or the ground fractures further. Each of these signals is fed into a live dashboard at the INGV control room, allowing volcanologists to watch the mountain's behavior hour by hour. Dr. Boris Benke, a leading expert who has spent decades on Etna, describes the situation in clear terms. We know the flank will collapse. The only unknown is when. His words echo through every emergency briefing and public update. For those living in the shadow of Etna, staying alert to these signs and listening to the data remains the most important safeguard. Etna's crack is not just a scar on a mountain, it is a warning written in stone. Over 300,000 lives sit within its shadow, as satellite data shows the ground shifting faster than ever recorded. Nature's timeline does not match ours. The only certainty is this fracture is still widening, and its reckoning is not confined to the distant future. What would you do if the countdown started today?